Hey there, students. Uh, welcome to this clip on uh, the application of law of sines and cosines. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the first problem, question number one on BRN. Uh, it says that two planes leave an airport at the same time. One plane is flying 60, 650 miles per hour at the BRN of 37 degrees east of north, and the other plane is flying at uh, 825 miles per hour at the BRN of uh, 53 degrees west of east. How far are these planes after flying for two hours? So their position is basically described using um, the airport as the point of reference. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, place our bearing. We're going to place our bearing um, on the airport. Okay, so starting from the airport, I'm going to draw my coordinate, my four cardinal points. So that's my north. Let me centralize it a little bit. My north. <laughs> going up is north and then side is going down the south. So north, then my east west is, is going to go in this direction. Okay? Alright, so we have um, this is going to be our north right here. This is north, and then this is east to the right, and then west to the left. Okay? So the third bearing will go going. Uh, 37 degrees east starting from west. So what does this look like? Well, this basically, if we say north 37 degrees east, this basically means you start, this is where you start facing, and then this is the direction that you rotate towards, okay? So we start facing the north, and then we go 37 degrees towards the east, okay? So that means that um, this connected segment right here, from here to here, is going to be 37 degrees to the right, okay? So start, if you start facing north and you rotate towards the east 37 degrees, this angle subtended is going to be 37 degrees east of north, okay? So that represents this first angular measure, this first out position right there, okay? The second bearing for the second plane, plane number two, starting from the airport again, is 53 degrees west of north, okay? So in this case, we're going to start facing the north, and then we're going to rotate towards the west, which is a counterclockwise rotation. All right, so let's draw the connected segment or the path that the plane flew in from the airport. And the heading of the plane was uh, 53 degrees west of north. So we start facing the north, and then we rotate 53 degrees towards the west. Okay, so this angle on the right side here is 53 degrees, all right? So this is 37 degrees and this is 53 degrees. The angle of separation between these two planes is simply the sum. 53 plus 37 is uh, 90 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle of separation between these two planes. The question says, how far apart are the planes after flying for two hours? So what we're looking for is this distance right here. From here all the way to there, how far is it? That's the question. All right. So, um, now in order to compute the distance that the plane flew, we need to make use of um, the, the dirt formula, okay? We know that distance is equal to rates times time, all right? So plane number one is flying at uh, 650 miles per hour. So D1, which is the distance place one covered, Plane 1 covered is the rate of plane 1, which is 650, times the time, which is 2 hours. Okay, if you multiply these two together, you get 1,300. 1,300 uh, miles. All right, so this distance right here is 1,300 miles. Okay, and then uh, plane 2, we're going to use the same formula, but uh, an index of 2 this time, D2, is going to be the rate of plane two times the time it travels. The rate of plane two as indicated here is 825 miles per hour. And then we'll multiply that by the time, which is two hours, because that's how long it has been flying for, okay? And then we'll multiply those two, we get uh, 1650 as the distance traveled by the uh, second plane, okay? So the second plane traveled 1650 miles. So now we need to find the distance of separation between these two. Now, um, let's label our triangle so we can assign a letter to this distance, okay? So let's call this point big A. 
to dominate k little a, what we're looking for, is called this big B. That will make 1300 little b, called this big C, and that will make a 1650 little c. All right? So this is an SAS situation because we have two sides and an included angle. So, all right, so since we have a SAS situation, uh, the question is, do we use law of sines or law of cosines to, to look for A, the distance of separation between plane one and plane two? So if we want to use law of sines, we must have a pair and another pair with a missing side or an angle. If you look at this situation, we have only an angle in this orientation. For the A's, we only have only a side for the C's and we have only a side for the D's. So we do not have a pair and it's impossible for us to determine any other uh, angle or side. So it's obvious here that we cannot use the law of sines. Remember, uh, law of sines is only applicable. Let's write out on the side here, law of sines. Law of sines is mainly for uh, SSA or uh, a AS problems. Okay, SSA or a uh, AAS. On the other side, the law of cosines. You use law of cosines when you have um, SSS or SAS. Okay. So in this situation, you can see that we have a side and included angle, and then a side SAS. So with this SAS orientation we can use the law of cosines, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, find, set up the situation using the law of cosines, and then we can look for the value of A, okay? So the variation of the law of cosines we're gonna use since we have angle A is the formula A square equals B square plus C square minus um, two BC cosine A. All right, so this is the formula we're going to use. All right, let's plug in the values. Um, a squared is what we're looking for. Uh, let's just see, B square is 1300 square. C square is 1650 square minus two times 1300 times 1650 cosine 90 degrees, all right? Okay, uh, A squared, let's plug this into our calculators and see what we get. Uh, so, let's see. We have 1300 square plus 1650 square minus 2 times 1300. 1300 times 1650 cosine 90. Okay, enter and answer is uh, formula 412,500. All right, so what we're going to do is put that here 4412500. So we have 4412500. To get A by itself, what we'll do is we'll take the square root of both sides, the left and the right. And then uh, our final answer A is going to be the square root of that uh, number. So let's evaluate what it is. So we're going to have the square root of the previous answer. And the result is 2100.56. All right. So A is basically is approximately 2100.56. OK. All right. So what does this answer, what does this answer mean? Um, it means that after flying for, t for um, two hours, the planes are 2100.56. All right, actually, let's, let's correct that. It's 595. So 2100.595. Uh, so the after flying for two hours, the planes are 2100.595, uh, changes to 595, 595 miles apart. All right, so there you have it. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the next question.
It says a pole tilts toward the sun at an angle of eight degrees from the vertical at and at it casts and it casts a twenty two feet shadow. The angle of elevation from the shadow to the top of the pole is forty three degrees. How tall is the pole? Okay, so that's number two. All right, so this is the pole that's tilting um uh, eight degrees from the vertical. So let's draw a vertical right here. So there goes your vertical. So the tilt right here is this is eight degree tilt right here. Okay, towards the sun. And since the sun is to the left, that means the shadow is going to be cast on the right side. So let's sketch what, what the shadow looks like. So uh, this is this could be the shadow. All right, and then uh, the elevation from the tip of the shadow to the tip of the pole is 43 degrees. So this right here is 43 degrees. See the elevation right here to the tip is 43 degrees. That's an, and then you're also told that the uh, the shadow is 22 feet long. 22 feet long. All right. And the question says how tall is the pole? So we're looking for this length right here. Let's call this let's call this x. Okay. How tall the pole is? All right. So how tall is it? Now um, let's set up our. I want to. I like to label this triangle that we have using common standard of measurement. So let's call this a. B, C, okay? So this segment on the consideration that I'm using on the pole is this side right here, okay? So that's congruent, congruent to, to X, all right? Now, since this is big B, that means that, um, that means that uh, this is, uh, we have little B right here. Uh, little B is basically X. And this is big A, this is local A. That's big C, this is little C, okay? All right, now since this is a right angle, this is a, the vertical to this shadow, the shadow is on the level ground. This is going to form a, a right triangle, 90 degrees. So that basically means that uh, the total angle, the angle um, from this pole, tilted pole to the ground, that angle right there is going to be, uh, is going to have a measure of uh, 98 degrees because we're going to add 8 degrees plus 9 degrees, so this is going to be 98 degrees, okay? So just to show you the work, angle A is equal to 90, which is the perpendicular uh, of this vertical to the ground, plus the tilt of the pole of 8 degrees, 98 degrees. Okay. Now we have two angles A A. We cannot. We might as well figure out the third angle. So angle C, using the triangle angle sum theorem, we have 180 minus the sum of A and B. Okay, minus 98 plus 43. All right. Uh, let's compute that with our calculators real quick. So we have 180 minus 98 plus 43. Okay, so the answer is 39 degrees. So angle C is 39 degrees. All right, now let's go ahead and put that in into that, the diagram. Angle C is 39 degrees. Okay, now uh, to find B, little b or x, uh, what are we going to use? Law of sines or law of cosines? You notice that we have a pair here, uh, little c and big c, and we have an angle here without the other piece. So we can consider this to be um, an AAS situation. Okay, so we have, so we we'll take a look at this. We have a uh, AAS situation. So let's, let me show that to you. This is an angle, 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 side. What angle, angle, and then we have a side here. Okay. So if you have AAS, you can use the the law of sines. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and um, find the value of B using the law of sines. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're going to find find uh, little b, all right, which should be the height of the pole. All right, so to do that, um, we're going to go little b over sine b equals the other ra ratio. I need to know the big one and the small one so I can solve it, right? And c meets that requirement for me, so I'm going to use the c pair since that's the pair I know, okay? So little c over sine c, this should help me solve for little b. 
which is the only unknown here, so this will be. All right, let's go ahead and plug in what we know. We have um, little b is unknown over sine big B. Uh, is not, is, what is it? Let's see. 43 degrees um, equal little c, which is 22, over sine big C, which is uh, 39. Okay, to get b by itself, we'll multiply both sides by sine 43. Sine 43, uh, these ones divide out. And then we have little b equals 22 sine 43 over sine uh, 39. Plug that, let's plug that into our calculators and see what, what we get, okay? So we have um, uh, 22 sine 43 divided by sine 39. All right, and our answer is 23.84841. Okay, so little b is approximately 23.841. So what does this mean? This basically means, um, let's go back to the question. It says, how tall is the pole? Um, let's see, what unit are we using here? Are we using feet? So the answer means that the pole, the pole is... 23.841 feet tall. All right, so there you have it. But thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here so you can get uh, updates to other cool math clips such as this. You can like this video if you liked it. Please post a comment to tell me what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.